In this video, we are still up at the Phillips's Gold Camp, about 70 miles outside of Nome, Alaska. This is an old GPAA claim that they worked back in the 1980s, and before that, it was actually a major mining operation here, sometime between, say, 1900 and World War II. I'm going to show you a few things here, uh, just to give you an overview. I know I've probably done this in some of my other videos, but some of you, this might be the first video of mine you've ever seen. So uh, this was a placer deposit that they mined. And what that means is it just means that the gold is loose in the gravels and the sand and the mud. They're not like carving into rock and blasting and crushing the stone. It's just loose gold that will be found in layers because this was actually laid down over thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, during uh, the, the times when these mountains were being worn down and as they were being worn down it was cutting through the gold deposits it was being pushed down the streams and getting caught up in the in the banks of sand on the on the corners and stuff that's basically what we're we're mining here today there's a big bend in the river where everything settles out far side you're going to have sheer cliffs this side's going to be sand and mud I got a hole dug here. I showed it to you a few days ago, but I flooded it because I had my high banker too close to the hole <laughs> and the water poured out, seeped through the ground and filled it full of water. So today it's dry. We're going to take a look at it. You're going to see a bunch of different layers of different types of soil. This particular area is, uh, is, is in this particular area. You want to look for a dark orange stain in the gravel and rocks that's where the gold is found i have several orange stains in this hole and we're going to explore each one one by one by taking a sample of each and panning it out and seeing how much if any gold is in any of the colors there's actually about five or six different colors we're going to do if one particular color has a lot of gold in it that's what we're going to follow that's called a pay streak and if it's a light orange color that has the gold, we will dig and dig and dig and uncover that light orange band, follow it, pan it, run it through our, our high banker or whatever we have here, and just concentrate on that particular kind of soil to get the most gold. Let's take a look at the hole and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But before we look at the hole, just a quick overview. You can see my buddy Bruce down there doing some panning. He's panning out his concentrates. This whole bench right here was mined in the past. You can see these lines right here. These are a line from the big machinery that they used maybe a hundred years ago. And there's a bunch of stuff down there. I've showed you in other videos. Uh, iron with rivets and stuff in it that uh, tells us it's, it's quite old, like a hundred years old. So we have worked up from the river here. I got the pit dug behind me. And if we look, we can see all the different colors. The top part of this hole is kind of just a grayish, silty loam. There's probably not any gold in that, but we might check that anyway. We have a light orange staining right there that we're going to check with a pan. We have a darker red staining right there. It's yet layer goes all the way around. We're going to check that. On the other side of the hole here, we have another orange staining. I suspect that might be the one we're looking for that actually has the gold in it uh, that's noted in this particular mine. But even deeper in the hole is a really dark red area right there. And I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing that before, so I'm really excited about trying to pan a little bit of that out. So that's what we're going to do. There's one, two three four samples that we're going to take and pan out together in the next few minutes so the first sample i'm going to take is from this uh, layer that was kind of really orange and had a lot of uh, stones in it that were rounded so i know by looking at that that's been churned up in a river and laid down with some clay so that's that's the one i suspect might have the gold but i don't know for sure and we will find out together I'm just going to scrape out one panful with this, being careful not to get too much of the upper layer or lower layer. So I want to know 
exactly which layer to follow. So this is the red layer. Now I'm a little bit worried about that one because it was very thin and there's really not much material there. So if this is loaded with gold, this is all we're going to get. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that reddish dirt that's behind me. It too has small stones in it that are rounded. So I know that was tumbled in a river and laid down here in a layer uh, that could have the gold in it. Who knows? But we're going to find out. So this is the reddish soil and the first thing I really noticed that it's loaded with schist. Now schist is a type of uh, stone and this is heavily weathered so it's soft and you can break it up. That's a really good sign because I, I think that the gold and the schist are found together in this area. And that's a good red color so this might be the one. Not the lighter stuff. I don't know. But we're going to find out. One more. I'm going to have to get this one in a bucket. As it turns out, that upper layer that was kind of reddish is very, very thin. I don't even think I can get a uh, pan full to do. So we're just going to do those three layers. Three layers for now. Let's go pan down in the... Uh, mosquito infested pool down the, down the hill there. Okay, so we have our three most important samples here. We have this really light colored one. The one that was kind of dark red, but it didn't really go very far. So it's more of a gray color now. And then we also have this red color with a decomposed schist that almost matches my shirt. So let's go ahead and do this one first. First thing we want to do is shake it up good, make sure all of the clay balls are broken up and you want to be able to feel the material in the pan moving around on the bottom. If when you're shaking it you can't feel that, it might be stuck to the bottom and that will not separate the gold. You want to get everything up in the motion of the water and you'll be able to feel the rocks going around the bottom. That's what you want to feel starting off the rocks rolling around the bottom of the pan I'm not quite there yet you may need to take your hands and dig around a little bit and lift it up especially if there's a lot of clay in there there's a fair amount in this one okay so i'm just going to swirl it around i'm not going to be too careful getting all the gold settling to the bottom now because it's very very heavy and I'll just start making the wave come in and the wave go out. And I'm just trying to take off the very top layer of what I've agitated. Because the gold being heavy is going to the bottom. The black sand's not quite as heavy, but it's going to the bottom. And the lighter stuff is floating to the top. So it's, it's segregating everything in like a layers of a cake. And we just want to take off that top layer. And we just keep doing that, taking off that top layer, until we get down to the very bottom. Then we have to be much more careful and take our time. But right now we can just zip through it. If you see any big rocks like that, if you want to scrape them off the top, that's fine. All the gold's in the bottom of the pan right now. You can see the water is getting less and less muddy. All the light clay particles are floating out now. We're getting down to the heavier stuff. The, the, the black sand, the garnet sand, which we have a lot in this area up here in Alaska. It's red. In fact, you can see little garnets in it. And we'll probably see some when we're done here. You can see I've already reduced the material from a big pan down to this. It didn't take very long. Just whip through it. Gold's going to settle to the bottom. So now we're going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to take off that top layer, maybe just a little couple millimeters, 
shake it, let the gold go back to the bottom, take off a couple millimeters, shake it, let the gold go back to the bottom, make sure it stays on the bottom, and get that light stuff to rise to the surface. And we're just going to keep doing that. <clears throat> and we'll work it down until the dirt in the bottom, the concentrates, are uh, just covering the riffles. Once we get to, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to I'm going to roll it around the inside of this riffle right here because I think it's sticking a little bit. I think we got some clay down here. We want to get that loose. Yeah, it is. I'll show you. It has to be loose so the gold won't float, sink to the bottom. See, this is stuck because there's a lot of clay in here. So I'm just going to break this free, get it out in the middle, same way there. Get some water in it to shake it up a little bit, just like that, and start again. Work it down to that bottom riffle, just like that. Shake it. Take off that top layer of, of fine, lighter stuff, just like that. And just keep doing that. Make sure the make sure the pan has is make sure all of the uh, material is covered with water, though, because you want it in that super saturated situation where everything's floating and jiggling around in there. All right, so that's probably good enough for this one. We'll be able to uh, look at the pan and see if we have any gold. So, I'm gonna bring everything back to the bottom just like that, get in that bottom riffle, and we're gonna set it aside. And we'll look at that together in a minute. Now, this is that very thin layer that we probably can't even follow. If it's a pay streak, it's loaded with gold, there's not much there to dig. So we'll be out of luck. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Get everything moving. I can feel those rocks rolling around on the bottom of the pan. It's exactly what we want. We'll just lift off some of this water like this. Wave comes in, wave goes out. Shake it a little more, same thing. If there's any clay balls in there, we want to grab them and break them up, but there's none, it's just rocks. I am going to rake off the top layer of rocks. I hope there's no giant nuggets in it. But if there were nuggets in there, they'd be in the bottom of the pan already. They'll sink rapidly. Same thing, back and forth like that. Again, everyone has their own technique. You'll see in the comments of this video, a lot of people will be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing it like that. You're never gonna find anything. Um, well, that could be true, but I do find stuff, so my technique works for me. Same thing. I'm going to take out a couple of these bigger rocks just to make it easier on us. Keep working it down, shake it so the gold slides back down those ripples, gets into the bottom of the pan. We just want to get off the light stuff. You'll see it float to the surface. You'll see the little sand float to the surface. That's not the black sand. That's the other, other, uh, types of sands that you'll find out here just from the sandstone and other other rocks that decompose. I'm going to just go ahead and do it with one hand. Wave in, wave out. Shake it back down, get it in those riffles. I'll pull off a couple of these bigger rocks. I'm going to bring everything back to the bottom this time. Check, make sure there's no clay balls on the bottom where it's um, wedged into that lower riffle and there isn't any so we're going to do the same thing shake it lightly get the top layer off just like cutting a cake it seems to have heavier stones in it there's a lot more stones in this one than the other so we have to remember which layer this came from <laughs> I've already forgotten this was the thin layer the other was the layer that looked like my shirt and the final one's going to be that uh, really orangey one. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a couple of these rocks out. We don't need them in there. Make sure there's no nuggets, no nuggets. Pull them out. Work everything down to the bottom riffle. Clean it out just a little tiny bit more. And that's good enough, okay? That's good enough for us to check in the very end. Okay, that's the second one. Now I'm going to do the third one, but I'm going to check the camera first. And it's still rolling, so we're fine. Now, this is that really orangey stuff that could could have the gold in it. I don't know. I was told to look for an orange stain layer, and boy, 
That's an orange stain layer, isn't it? Look at that. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shake it. Make sure we can feel the rocks rolling around on the bottom of the pan. And I can feel the rocks rolling. We're just going to get some of that really light clay off the top. That's not in balls. It's just loose clay. Shake it some more. Get it to the surface. Same thing. Now I'm going to rake off some of these bigger rocks. If there's any clay balls in there, I will break them up. But there aren't any. All right. So here we go. Take it good. Make sure you can feel it rolling on the bottom of the pan. I can feel it. I can feel the rock sliding across the bottom. Same thing. Wave in, wave out. Get that top tiny layer of of uh, lighter material off, and just keep doing that, working it down. Just like that. You always want to keep it shaking it though. Work it back down. Really bright, <laughs> bright orange stuff, isn't it? We'll pull a big rock out of there. We don't need that in there. I could probably actually go a lot faster than this, and I, and I should to take some of these bigger rocks off the top. You can spend all day just panning out one or two pans. But what we want to do is just find if there's any gold here so that we can run it through the high banker. I may be able to do a hundred pans a day like this of material, but with a high banker I can do a thousand or ten thousand pans a day. And it's all about moving material in this hobby. I mean it's fun to go slow and look for it and that's what you enjoy. That's great. I enjoy that too. Um, but if you want to find a lot of gold, you have to move a lot of material. That's a limiting factor most of the time in this hobby, is, is how much material you can move. That's why you see the dredgers get really big, equipment gets really big, you see bulldozers and backhoes. It's all about moving material. Take out a couple of these big flat rocks, work it down. A little tiny bit more. We'll be able to see what's in here. Top layers. Has a lot more uh, very fine silt in there. That orange color. Very, very fine silt. Usually that's a good sign if you're in an area where the gold's found in the, in the clay. It's taking a little longer on this one because because of that. Because of that fine stuff. We're going to bring it all down to the bottom one more time and work it back through the ripples just because this is weird. I'm going to pick off these couple big rocks here, just get rid of those. All right, that's close enough. Okay, so let me uh, readjust the camera and then we'll look at each individual pan. Okay, this is our very first pan. I think this was the one that looked like my shirt. I'm gonna work the gold down at the bottom. It'd be, it would be better if you didn't have a cracked pan, but that's all I had down here on the riverbank with me today. So this would be good for now. Okay, we're gonna spread it out like that a little bit. I'm gonna roll the water around. Again, we're just looking for gold right now. And it should be right up in this area if there's any specks or giant nuggets. I'm not seeing any. You seeing any? See a couple little tiny specks right there. Very, very fun. There's a lot of little fine specks in there. It's probably somewhat hard to see, but they're there. That's not enough gold for me to want to dig that layer. So in this particular location, right here on this part of the bank, that red layer that looks like my shirt, we don't want to dig. We just want to skip that. We dig down to it, we're going to pitch it to the side and keep moving and to get to that pay layer. This isn't the pay layer right here on this part of the creek or the uh, the uh, the load bearing area. Well, it's not load, but where the gold is, <laughs> the placer deposit. All right, next one. This is a very thin layer that even if it has a lot of gold in it, we're not going to be able to follow because um, well, the layer just kind of petered out on us. 
All right, same thing, round and around. You see these black rocks? That's the garnets. Garnet sand. Black and red. I guess I should say dark red, really. Same thing, around and around. We'll look for gold. Look for gold. I don't see any yet. You see any yet? No, I thought I saw a little bit roll down, but it's, it was too light, so we know it's not gold. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah, see, I don't see any in there either. There's a little bit right there I can see coming up. Just very, very fine though. Look, you can see about uh, one, two, three. There's three specks there and a bunch of, a couple little ones over here. So, but again, that's not enough really for us to worry about. So, that weird thin little layer that we saw that was red, we're just going to skip that too. Now comes the orange layer, and I'm going to go ahead and pull a few of these big rocks out of here. We don't have to deal with those. Mosquitoes are coming out. <laughs> I have a lot of DEET on me, so they're not bothering me too much. Alright, let's check this one. Alright, I'm going to work it all down. Just shake it like that, and the gold will settle down at the very bottom of the pan. And go like that, it kind of spreads it out, and we'll wash the water over it and look for it. And if there's any gold at all, we'll see it as soon as it starts to move. I don't see any yet. Let's go ahead and move these two. Get those out of the way for you. Level it out. I see some black sand. There's a layer of black sand right here. That's a good sign. Very good sign. I don't really see much in the way of gold. Hmm. You see any? <laughs> I don't see any at all in there. Nope. There was less in this one than any other. There's more black sand. That might be a speck right there, but... None of these pans had enough gold to want me to keep digging there. I'm not going to sample that clay layer on, or that uh, loam layer on top, that gray, because I know there's nothing in it because I have checked it in other holes out here. Um, so we're going to move on. There's a hole beside me here we got some gold out of. The other day I just did a couple quick samples. Let's grab a pan from there and see what's in it. I can't remember if, if it, what color it was even, but we'll check it out together. And then we're going to go down to the river and do some crevicing. Because I, I do pretty well on that here. All right, so I have the hole cleaned out some, and it's filling full of water. But I did get a nice flake of gold out of here the other day. So let's go ahead and grab uh, a quick pan or two, because the water water level here is actually higher than that little pond I'm in. So we might be able to drain it down to it, or it's the exact same level. I can't really tell. <laughs> Probably the exact same level. Let's just go ahead and grab a pan. Looks like it's a little bit uh, yellowish down in the bottom. So that might be that layer that we're looking for. One of the reasons I shied away from this the other day was uh, because of this overburden here, meaning that if we hit a pay streak, we're gonna have to move all of this dirt too. And that's kind of a pain. Put that aside. That's I got that good, that's uh, kind of that orangey yellow color. That might be that color, that layer that people are telling me to look for out here. We'll try to get a little bit of that in the pan. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's good, that's different. It's different than the rest of it. We'll get that in the pan, we'll pin that out too. In fact, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna make sure I just get this yellow stuff. Again, this is called prospecting. This is looking for the gold, looking for the pastry. 
Once we find the pay streak, that's mining. Right now we're just prospecting. All right, that should do it. Uh, I'm gonna move the camera again. Okay, let's try this one. You'll notice that my pan is full of rocks. Now, the reason I kept the rocks in here is because the gold could be stuck to the tops or bottoms or mixed in with them. So we want to get the rocks washed and get all the dirt off. You see this piece of decomposing schist right here has clay stuck to it. See that clay stuck to that rock? That could be loaded with gold. We need to get all that clay washed off these rocks. Not as hard as it sounds. First thing we're going to do is shake it good. Get everything in motion and shake it. Lift it up, pour off some of the silt. Take a look at what we have. If they're clean, you just rake them off. Just like that. If there's any clay stuck to them, you want to wash them into the pan. The geese have a little clay stuck to them, so we'll wash them. Make sure everything drops into the pan. That's pretty good. Now we're going to get everything in motion again. You can feel it rolling across the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and get the silt off of it first. Then we'll scrape some of those bigger rocks off again, like we've been doing. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and scrape these big rocks off. I'm not going to dig down into the uh, sand and, and small stones. Although it shouldn't matter too much because the gold should be in the bottom of the pan already. Pick it up good, make sure everything's moving around, and we'll work it down one more time. Well, actually, several more times, but we're going to keep going with this one. Mosquitoes are starting to bite me on the hands, which means the DEET is uh, wearing off my hands. Funny out here. Sometimes you come out and there's no mosquitoes and within five minutes you're swarmed with them. Right now I'm getting lots of garnet sand in there and lots of garnets. So this might be a good layer. All right, here I come. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check everything to that bottom part of the pan. And I'm going to kind of tip it back and shake it and flatten it out just a little. Look, there's some uh, clay stuck there, so I need to... Make sure that's mixed up better than what I had it. Just a little bit, that's not gonna hurt anything, but we wanna get that mixed up, okay. Not good, I didn't like that one. Shake it to the bottom, shake it and flatten it out. Here, that's good. For me, that's good. See these little red stones right here, those are garnets. I think some people may collect them, I don't know. Okay, we're gonna shake this down just like that. A lot of that garnet sand, lots of little garnets in this one. This might be a better pan, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Move that one so you can see better. See any gold? Not seen any gold yet. No, I'm not seeing any gold at all in this one. Yeah, there's a little piece right there. Very small though. It's a couple little pieces. I mean, there's, whoops, I just washed it away. <laughs> okay, so there's one uh, piece here that's, uh, you know, not too bad. A little chunky and uh, maybe eight or ten little ones right in there and some very fine stuff. That's not as good as some of the, the stuff I've seen here. So I learned a few things with this demonstration. Having dug that hole, seen the different layers, tested the different layers, I know that I don't want to pursue those layers. I don't want to dig any more in that hole. Uh, I'm gonna probably just go ahead and fill that one in. This one had a little bit of promise. I have a good feeling about it, but there's so much overburden here, that's gonna be a lot of work. Plus it's flooded even worse than it was when I was digging before. So that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you uh, understand what I was doing with the sampling, the prospecting, not the mining. And, uh, you know, maybe you learned a thing or two. I, I certainly did. <laughs> I know I don't want to dig in that hole right there. So I don't want to dig sand that looks like my shirt. Although my shirt is extremely filthy and it looks like it's made out of sand. We'll see you on the next video. We've got more coming up. A few more days here. We're going to have some fun. I promise you. At least I'm going to have some fun. And hopefully you'll enjoy what I enjoy. We'll see you on the next one.